Hello, Mike Rutherford here to tell you a bit more about the land snails that you might be able to find in your back gardens for the upcoming Backyard BioBlitz. Now I'm calling from Scotland, I, as you may be able to tell from the background scenery, a little bit colder here as well. I would love to be in Trinidad to poke around in some backyards myself, but I'm just going to have to rely on you to do it all for me and upload lots of wonderful records onto iNaturalist so I can ID them from afar. Anyway, let's get on with a little bit more background to the spe species, where to find them, uh, and some of the odds and ends that may help you out. There are many parts of a garden where you can find snails and slugs. A good place to start is somewhere like a compost bin. Have a look around the side. Not much here except worms at the moment. But also look under pot plants, under rocks. Anywhere where you find little patches of uh, moisture, because snails and slugs do need the moisture, they don't want to dry out. Look in vegetable patches as well. Unfortunately, many species of snails can be crop pests, so and there's a good place to find them in there. I am also looking for sort of long grass and unkempt vegetation. You can poke around. Oh, get help from a puppy. For example, here's a common British snail. And if you find something interesting, just pop it in a vial and you can take it inside. But look all over the place. Come out at night as well and have a good look. Uh, many snails and slugs prefer to be out when it's dark because it's generally uh, better being out of the sun, less chance of drying out. Fewer predators as well, fewer birds around. And look around underneath leaves, uh, get into sort of mulch. Um, piles of bark chips, piles of grass cuttings, anything like that. Lots of good places for snails and slugs to hide in their garden. Look out for empty shells as well and just uh, see what you can find. A few useful tools to have when you're looking for and examining snail shells include a pair of forceps, a small probe, a hand lens with or without a built-in light, and a small measuring device of some sort, a ruler's good, but I've got this handy little card here for scale. So if you look at this little snail here, you might want to manipulate it gently. Some snail shells are quite delicate. Turn it around so that you can get photographs or a good look at all sides of it. And when taking a photograph to add to iNaturalist, it'd be very useful if you take it against a scale. so that other people have a good idea of the size of it, which will aid in identification. Although I don't have any live snails to show you, I do have quite a few shells left over from my time in Trinidad. When you first look around your garden, your backyard, you might not find much, but if you look close, there can be quite an abundance of snails. All the snails on this plate here were recovered from one ice cream container's worth of soil that was scraped up in various places along the North Coast Road. See, so you've got a big obvious snail shell here and some small medium ones, but the real diversity in snails in Trinidad lies in amongst the tiny shells. You see here, there's hundreds of little specimens. Unfortunately, to really get a good look at them requires either a hand lens like this or a microscope. So it depends what you have access to. But the bigger snails can be fairly easily identified just with the naked eye. Now just to look at some of the common and slightly rarer snails you might encounter when looking around. First off you've got the giant South American land snail. This is a native giant snail, Megalobulimus. And not to be confused with the giant African land snail, the invasive one that is unfortunately spreading all over Trinidad. Uh, next we've got Ortholycus, a beautiful sculpted snail that quite often found in trees. Slightly smaller but no less well-patterned Plecochylus, the distinctive aperture. Then you've got two little snails, quite similar. Uh, one's got a rougher thumbnail-like appearance in the shell and one's just thin lines. But both of these snails have 
little operculums, a small trapdoor that can close over the aperture in the live snail. These ones are a few of the kind of limestone specialists uh, and more likely to be encountered out in the forest rather than in gardens. You've got the beautiful Halicina nemoralis, a little Halotudora aripensis, and Brachypodella trinitaria. Now these ones are all either endemic to Trinidad and Tobago or only found in Trinidad and Tobago and in nearby Venezuela, so quite special local ones. Whereas these pair here are two of the most common snails of the, the region and the country. This is Subulina otona, a long pointed snail, and Halicina dysoni, a little tiny round snail, which sometimes in life has small hairs covering the shell, so it can be quite distinctive. Then you've got some of the smaller specimens. This tiny little one here, a very odd shape, it kind of looks slightly deformed. Streptaxis. Beckyanum, it's like a, a shortened version of the Subulina. And then if you're really going for it, you can find some of these tiny, tiny specimens. These are Gastrocopter. There's several snail shells in there. Less than a millimeter across. And Carolus consabrinus, again, very common snail, widespread all over the Trinidad and Tobago, but not surprisingly, under-recorded because it's so hard to find. It's almost transparent and it's less than a millimeter long. Well, there you go, some of the basics. To help you out, I've made a, a couple of simple ID sheets showing the more commonly encountered and some of the more beautiful snails from Trinidad and Tobago. These are photos courtesy of the Natural History Museum UK. And it shows uh, the snails, some the larger ones at half life size and then medium sized at life size and then all the small ones at either two times, five times, or ten times life size. So that should help you get a, a good idea of some of the ones you're likely to encounter. Well, good luck out there. Hopefully we'll see lots of snail records appearing on iNaturalist, and I'll try and identify as many as I can for those who are having trouble.